Nobody is greenwashing the living number twos out of themselves harder than every car maker selling EVs. Like, if you're fishing for insufferably self-righteous Muppets with cash, greenwashing is the most effective bait known. These people will swallow any amount of green BS. Instead of engineering some kind of future plug-and-play paradise, we're actually setting things up so that the electric utopia of the future is looking more like a post-hydrocarbon hell on Earth and in this report, I'm going to show you just one aspect of that, with which not even the most insufferable electric Kool-Aid sipper could argue. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com. Oh, Newcast Cheap, Australia-only website card, you know. There's a popular fantasy about electric utopia, isn't there? When EVs wear out, we're told the batteries will be resurrected, kind of like Jesus, only to power our houses or recycle to recover their incredibly precious metals. In reality, they're just going to go into landfill, and this is already happening. And I, for one, would rather live right next door to a nuclear waste dump. Today's report is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's grooming powerhouse with the right tools for every dad this Father's Day. Manscaped, of course, trusted by over 9 million men worldwide for their awesome trimmers, their hygiene products and their premium boxes. So... If you're looking for the perfect Father's Day gift, check this out. The Handyman, a great compact face shaver, ideal for the dad who loves tech and clever new gadgets. The Handyman delivers a quick, close shave with a unique dual blade system. It features a standard foil shaver as well as a long hair leveler blade to knock down up to three days worth of growth. Your dad will kiss stubble goodbye and say g'day instead to a smooth, well-groomed face in minutes. The Handyman features skin-safe technology designed to reduce nicks and cuts. It's also IPX7 waterproof, so cleanup is quick and easy. Check the sleek design. The Handyman fits perfectly in your hand, making it easy to manoeuvre and reach even the trickiest spots. And it hits the sweet spot for compactness. It does the work without taking up too much space in your gym bag or travel kit. Talking performance now, the handyman will slash up to a three-day growth effortlessly. No more long-winded grooming procedures. Gotta love that. And you get up to 60 minutes of runtime on a single charge. So multiple shaves without running out of power. If the battery level indicator blinks, it's just time to plug in the USB-C and recharge. Simple. A great practical gift for Father's Day. The Handyman Shaver from Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash autoexpert today. You'll get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the promo code AEJC at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code AEJC at manscaped.com. Your dad can join over 9 million dudes worldwide who trust Manscaped to be there with the right tools for the family jewels. The ACCC is about to regain consciousness, briefly, and declare war on greenwashing Australia-wide. <laughs> They're drawing up their battle plans now, entertainingly. So here's a really fascinating example from that, which opens the door to one of the biggest conceivable problems there are around the mad rush into deploying EVs without first getting the integration details right. Example, claims that are likely to be false or misleading. Waste and recycling infrastructure varies significantly between different geographical regions. For example, some products that are fully recyclable in Sweden have no appropriate recycling streams in Australia and will be sent to landfill when sold here. A product manufactured in Sweden has the claim 100% recyclable packaging. The product is also sold in Australia, where the recycling facilities for this type of plastic do not exist. The claim is likely to mislead consumers in Australia and contravene the Australian consumer law. So, bullshitting by omission about things like recycling could get car makers and 
related EV businesses into hot water in future. Subject to the ACCC actually regaining consciousness, hashtag not likely. Let us open the door to this room of inconvenient truth about recycling then, shall we? Perception versus reality. In much the same way as the Fremantle Highway and the Felicity Ace shipping disasters highlight the fact that fire safety safeguards are not in place for EVs both on the water and in our cities, this example from the ACCC highlights exactly how badly we are botching what we do with EVs if they expire of old age, as opposed to, you know, going out early in a blaze of glory, literally. Let's look at what the car makers typically say about recycling first. And this example I'm about to give is the first one that Google dished up for me. They popped it into my grill when I requested it. Modern EV batteries are built with an even higher proportion of recyclable materials, and they are also highly recyclable. Additionally, EV batteries last for years, and many of them will have a life well beyond that of the vehicle. That's from Hyundai on their global website on a page entitled Common EV Myths Busted. Doubtless, if you're thinking about buying an EV for the very first time, you might find yourself, you know, rightly concerned about recycling the battery and what's going to happen there. And if so, Google will doubtless quickly deliver you to a corporate myth-busting page such as the one we just saw. It's hardly an outlier, like all EV merchants do this kind of thing. Car makers present the concept of EV battery recycling in the context of it being tantamount to a done deal. Like, nothing for you to be concerned about here, dude. So please do give us your beautiful money. They really want that. <laughs> They're going to love you for it too, right up until the fun's clear. That's how this works. Those chumps at Nissan Australia. No reference to individuals is made. I'm talking solely about the company. Well, they recently tried to make rather a big deal out of taking nine first-generation Nissan Leaf batteries, the truly shitful ones that crapped out because they weren't thermally managed even halfway decently, they took nine of those batteries, they stuck them up the arse of their Victorian casting plant, and they fed them electricity, in part, from a solar array on the roof. In an exciting window into the future for end-of-life electric vehicle batteries, and an important step towards Nissan Strayer's goal of carbon neutrality, the NCAP battery project called Nissan Node will see a new solar array installed at Nissan Casting Strayer as well as new EV chargers. An exciting, important step towards that all-important goal of carbon neutrality. Please. In other news, we're still selling the 5.6-litre V8-powered Nissan Patrol. It's a true circular economy project using end-of-life batteries from the Nissan LEAF. Well, I suppose if you can do it with the worst EV batteries ever made, should be a downright piece of piss with a decently engineered battery. The project is estimated to reduce Nissan Casting Strayer's annual CO2 emissions by 259 tonnes, while saving 128 megawatts of energy every year. 259 tonnes, golly gee, Jim Bob. A total Australian greenhouse emissions 500 million tons. Let's just put that in perspective. So with this exciting, important step, Nissan Australia will reduce national greenhouse emissions by one half of one one millionth. Half of one ten thousandth of one percent. Oi, oi, oi. Yes. Pro tip. They can't save, quote, 128 megawatts of energy every year. Not possible, because energy is not measured in megawatts. You have to measure energy in megawatt hours. Otherwise, the things you say are just bullshit made by a scientifically illiterate organisation, seemingly. I don't get that. Is there not a person at Nissan who could at least verify that they get the technical details right? Like, Jesus I would argue that this is a stellar serve of greenwashing that paints a picture 
entirely at odds with what currently happens to batteries at the end of their lives. Lithium-ion battery repurposing and recycling in Australia is, of course, statistically non-existent. And this is not because there is an insufficient supply of dead batteries. Oh, fucking contraire. Have a guess how much EV battery waste is projected in this country by 2030. Guess, dude, write it down. According to this report by Randell Environmental Consulting, commissioned by the Department of Climate Change and Energy, it's going to be 7,000 tonnes. That's just EV waste by 2030. That's equivalent to about 15,000 EV batteries. That is per annum, not in total. Plus 27,000 tonnes more of this waste from handheld devices, which would be things such as your old iPhone power tools, laptop, whatever. Fast forward to 2036 and see the miracle of geometric projection in action. From the same report, lithium-ion battery waste for 2036 is projected to be 56,000 tonnes from EVs, roughly equivalent to 130-ish thousand dead EVs, and there is no plan for a recycling mandate. That's in addition to 68,000 more tonnes from devices. Like, holy shit, Batman, you'll be able to see the pile from space. This is what a looming environmental catastrophe looks like. Now, presently in this country, you cannot turn on the news without getting a critical update on a thing called The Voice, which is a largely symbolic initiative designed apparently to appease Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who make up 3.2% of the Australian population, according to the 2021 census. To put this in perspective, right, I am left-handed. Roughly 10% of us are. We grow up and we live our lives in a world that actively discriminates against us, seemingly at every turn. Everything from handwriting and scissors to lathes, vernier calipers and a Glock 19 is designed for righties. Apparently, this is completely okay. Like, dude, that's not discrimination. We're only 10% of the population. It's actually where the word sinister comes from in Latin about the left-handed thing. Opinions seem split on the all-important voice, doesn't it? But I would argue it's actually split three ways, right? One camp, strongly yes. One camp, no, with equal conviction. Biggest camp, however, I suspect, is in the middle. And they would comprise people like me and possibly also you who really don't care one way or the other. Couldn't give a crap. Apologies if I'm supposed to care. I just don't, dude. And this might be a character defect. Yes or no, I don't care. <laughs> We did the same thing with gay marriage in this country. I was in the same camp too, in as much as I really don't care if someone marries the Sydney Opera House and the frickin' Harbour Bridge. That kind of polygamy doesn't make me, no, never frickin' mind, dude. But I would ever so much appreciate it if we could possibly move on expeditiously and address issues that really do matter to all of us, such as looming environmental catastrophes urgently crying out for regulatory framework, things of that nature. With battery non-recycling, we are just hoping the free market steps in and saves the day, as it always does, clearly. Lithium-ion battery waste is growing by 20% per year and could exceed 136,000 tonnes by 2036. That's from the CSIRO. Looking at the calendar, right? The prototype lithium-ion battery was developed in 1985. The technology was first commercialised in 1991. So since then, we've had three decades of intervening commercial deployment of lithium-ion batteries across the world. Three decades. Would you care to guess how we're going with the recycling then down here in 
Australia. Only 10% of Australia's lithium-ion battery waste was recycled in 2021. The balance, which would be 90% of it, just goes into landfill, which is pretty sobering shit. 6,000 tonnes, but set to grow geometrically, projected to be 9,000 tonnes this year, 50% growth in just two years. That's the CSIRO again there. A, I thought this was supposed to be a circular economy, and B, every time I see a report about battery recycling, it paints the entirely bullshit narrative of a resource that is precious, like... I don't know, Tiffany cufflinks packed inside a turd of Great Dane or something, with the demanding work of extraction being carried out by highly trained technicians in an environment roughly as clean as the laboratory in which NASA builds those big fuck-off orbiting telescopes. In reality, of the 6,633 estimated total tonnes of lithium-ion battery waste produced in Australia, in 2021, roughly 6,000 tonnes just got chucked into landfill. There is no process, no stewardship, no policing of the pollution. The free market is not standing there with its hand out, gagging for your dead battery, ready to give you cash for that valuable Makita battery that's just taken a giant steaming dump in the bottom of your toolbox. You just dump it in the bin and hope the compactor doesn't burn to the ground until it's, I don't know, two or three streets away. If we are still managing to show the world just how spectacularly shit we can be as a nation by 2036, instead of making Australia less shit, which would be my preferred option, we'd best make plans for something like 122,000 tonnes of lithium-ion waste in the frickin' landfill. And that's just for one year. And yeah, it adds up like it's cumulatively toxic. That is a hell of a lot of lithium hexafluorophosphate in the freaking groundwater, among other hateful environmental and lifestyle outcomes. So it seems to me that we haven't really learned all that much from things such as the whole asbestos experience, have we? If there's a silver lining here, however... I'm seeing quite a compelling screenplay for anyone who wants to reboot the whole Erin Brockovich film franchise, albeit with a modern green hellscape twist. I would argue that selling EVs is dead easy. Like, the cars are here, people queue up, they want them desperately. Selling them is therefore a piece of piss. But integrating EVs into civilization is actually quite hard. You know, the fire suppression safety, the responsible disposal, the protection of the population from the worst aspects of this kind of new technology, the regulatory framework, like nobody is addressing it. But we're on the voice and we're doing nothing about left-handed discrimination. We are not mitigating the hazards in operation or at the end of life for these batteries. We're just not. In fact, we appear to be getting this so badly wrong that I would suggest the next generation will have yet another excellent reason to detest us.